According to Islam's most trusted sources, Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, had sex with a prepubescent nine-year-old girl. And we know that Aisha hadn't reached puberty because the Muslim sources talk about her playing with dolls in the presence of Muhammad. And according to Muslim scholars, girls were allowed to play with dolls only up until the age of puberty. Once they reached puberty, dolls were considered images and they were no longer allowed to play with them. We have all kinds of reasons for believing that Aisha had not reached puberty according to the Muslim sources. But there are some hadiths that Muslims use in the West to show that Aisha had in fact reached puberty. And let's go ahead and take a look at an example. This is Sunan Abu Dawud, number 4933 or 4915, depending on which edition you're using. And let's go ahead and read something interesting here. So this is about Aisha being taken to the house of Muhammad to consummate the marriage with her. So Aisha narrated, the messenger of Allah married me when I was seven or six. When we came to Medina, some women came. According to Bishr's version, Umm Ruman came to me when I was swinging. They took me, made me prepared, and decorated me. I was then brought to the Messenger of Allah, and he took up cohabitation with me when I was nine. She halted me at the door, and I burst into laughter. Abu Dawud said, that is to say, I menstruated. And I was brought in a house, and there were some women of the Ansari in it. So here we have according to Sunan Abu Dawud, that Aisha started menstruating right before she was taken to Muhammad to consummate the marriage. What great timing that would be. But here's the problem. I go to another translation of the exact same hadith. This is the Darussalam edition of Sunan Abu Dawud. And we read, it was narrated that Aisha said, the Messenger of Allah married me when I was seven or six years old. When we came to Al Medina, some women, Bishr said, Umm Rahman, came to me when I was on a swing and took me and prepared me and adorned me. Then I was brought to the Messenger of Allah and he consummated the marriage with me when I was nine years old. She made me stand at the door and I started to breathe deeply. Then I was brought into a room where there were some of the Ansari. Hey, wait a minute. What happened to the part about Aisha starting to menstruate? It just says that she started to breathe deeply. Well, now I'm confused, everyone. Uh, I mean, it looked like we had good evidence that Aisha had reached puberty. She had started menstruating when she was taken to Muhammad to consummate the marriage. And there are Muslims around the world who use this hadith to show that Aisha had, in fact, reached puberty. But I look at a different translation of the exact same hadith, and it doesn't say one word about Aisha menstruating. So now I'm just confused. I don't know who to believe here. I don't, I don't speak Arabic, so I don't know which one is correct. I'm in a really, really sad spot right now. Oh, wait a minute. Fortunately, I'm here with my good friend, Al Fadi. David, man, this is an amazing studio you have, man. And, and, and the logo, by the way, looks familiar to me. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty, pretty cool studio uh, I built for myself here. <laughs> now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you know Arabic, don't you? Well, the last I checked, yes. Well, I this is Arab. some great timing because I was sitting here and I just had no idea what I was going to do. And then you're here. So yeah. this is great. So let me go ahead and ask you since you're here. Mm -hmm. Now, you've got the Arabic in front of you, right? Uh, yes. I mean, uh, the Arabic uh, that uh, you were just looking at and I'm trying to pull it here. And, and maybe uh, they can show it to us right here on the screen as well for everyone else to, to be looking at it. But y your concern is that the English is saying something that you're suspecting the Arabic is not, and that's the focus on puberty. Yeah, we're, we're, we're getting two different translations. One says she menstruated, the other doesn't say anything about menstruating. So I was hoping you could confirm what Muslims are telling us that she had in fact reached the time of menstruation and show us that in the Arabic. Unfortunately, David, your suspicion is correct. And there is no word here in Arabic that denotes the age of puberty or reaching puberty or even anything remotely close to that. Wow.
Why was the war so, so sure? So we can say that either that's just a mistake it's just an error. Someone someone messed up the translation or someone's trying to be deliberately deceptive to make people think that Aisha had reached puberty. If it is one example, you can say, OK, maybe it's a mistake, but there is a an effort here to be deceptive or to try to at least shed the light on something totally different than what the Arabic is saying, taking advantage of the fact that many people probably who will be watching this or reading it are non Arab. Let's go ahead and look at a passage in Sahih al-Bukhari, and we're going to see something very similar happening. But this is, um, this is another example that is used by Muslims to show that Aisha had reached puberty. And here, it specifically says that she'd reached puberty. So lots of Muslims go to this passage, and I've seen lots of non-Muslims say, hey, wait a minute, the Hadith does claim that Aisha had reached puberty right here in Sahih al-Bukhari, number 476. So here we have narrated Aisha, the wife of the prophet, I had seen my parents following Islam since I attained the age of puberty. So since she reached the age of puberty, she's seen her parents following Islam. We have an idea of when her parents started following Islam. So Aisha must have reached puberty well before, well before, her marriage was consummated with Muhammad, and so some conclude that she must have therefore been much older. She must have been 16 or 18 or, or 21 by the time uh, Muhammad consummated the marriage with her. So here, if it really says that she'd reached puberty, this will contradict some of the, the other hadiths that say she hadn't, but at least Muslims would have a good case for saying that she'd reached puberty if this is in fact what it says in the Arabic. So could you break down the Arabic where it clearly says right here that she had reached puberty. There is no word in the Arabic at all uh, denoting puberty. Uh, my suspicion is like they took a word here, aqil, meaning uh, recall or as far as I can remember, and somehow they're connecting this to puberty. That's my only suspicion here. So it, it, this in the Arabic, it doesn't say puberty. It does not. You're saying they're, they're interpreting something else to mean puberty for That's this. That's right, exactly. Okay, so you're saying that that, that means something when I, I could recall. That, that's pretty much. I mean, it has to do with, with the word aql, meaning uh, brain, mem here, memory. So they're either thinking of it as far as I can recall or when I started it to remember things, somehow they're making a connection here to that. And there's no connection, right? There's no connection between saying, hey, from the age I could recall things and saying, oh, that's puberty. As if when you reach puberty, that's when you start being able to remember things, right? Unless uh, there is a different science that they're following. <laughs> I'm not aware stuff. of anything like unless that. You, unless you, unless you, you know, yeah. you reach puberty and then you got a head injury, forgot everything, and then all of a sudden, right then, you started remembering things. But uh, I, I don't know who to believe here. So let's go ahead and take a look at another Muslim translator, Aisha Buley, one of the most popular Muslim translators in recent years. Um, let's go ahead and check out her translation of the exact same hadith and see if she agrees with you or if she agrees with uh, those who say that it refers to Aisha reaching puberty. So this is the Aisha Buley translation there, number 464. It is related that Aisha, the wife of the prophet, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, said, I have no recollection of my parents doing anything but following the deen of Islam. So she agreed with you. It actually yeah. has something to do with re re remembering certain things. That's right. And, and Aisha is taking a, a unique look here. She's saying what Aisha, uh, the other Aisha, uh, the, the wife mm -hmm. of Muhammad, is saying is that when it comes to religious practices, all I can remember is that my parents were always Muslims. Mm -hmm. So she's not saying that Aisha did not remember things before that, but she's saying from a religious practice of her parents, all she can remember is that both of her parents were actually followers of Islam. So, so that's the angle. So no, now notice, um, Aisha's parents weren't always Muslims. Right. But she's saying as long as she can remember, they were Muslims. Correct. But this would mean that she was actually very young, right? Because it would mean she has no, she has, she doesn't even remember when her parents were polytheists. She only remembers when they were Muslims. But there, the 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 other translation we looked at suggests that she'd already reached puberty 
by the time her parents converted, and so completely yeah. diff, completely different, uh, yeah. different versions of events. That's true. And, and and keep in mind, when Muhammad even proposed to marry her, uh, Abu Bakr has been following him for years. Mm -hmm. He was among the first to follow Muhammad. So uh, this also shows that Aisha is not talking about the moment she married Muhammad. No, she's talking about for as long as she can remember, even before this incident of being proposed to him, that. She can recall her parents worshiping idols or doing any of the Quraysh rituals or whatever the case might be. She can remember them just being followers of Islam. So she was she was actually young. She was right. she was too young to remember when her parents weren't right. uh, Muslims. Now, so it's very interesting that other that the the other translator would translate that as reaching puberty. When you're saying it doesn't mean that, Aisha Buley saying it doesn't mean that. But here's what's here's what I find most interesting. I'm going to go to another hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari where it seems to be giving the same beginning of the of the exact same story and here they tra they magically translate it accurately <laughs> and so this look at this this is Sahih al-Bukhari number 2297 and it's the same thing narrated Aisha wife of the prophet since i reached the age when i could remember things I have seen my parents worshiping according to the right faith of Islam. So here they suddenly know what it means for Aisha to be saying that uh, from the time she could remember anything, she remembers her parents following Islam. So uh, given the Arabic here, is, is, the, is the Arabic the same? In other words, is the, are, are the two passages talking about the same thing in Arabic? The Arabic is almost identical. Uh, so this is why you can tell it's the English side that is trying to sway things or tilt the balance, if you wish, and trying maybe there is an agenda, as you stated, and uh, I, I, you can't blame them. I mean, they know the English audience is going to be disturbed by things like this. So they're trying somehow to lessen the impact and insert the idea of puberty. And so it's a, it, which is interesting because you can find multiple passages in Bukhari, which specifically state that Aisha hadn't reached the age That's of puberty. They true. even include some commentary by Ibn Hajar al Asqalani, the, the, the considered by many to be the greatest Hadith scholar of all time, specifically saying that Aisha had not reached puberty when she's taken to yeah. Muhammad's house to consummate the marriage. Uh, there, there's, there, uh, in number 5153 of Sahih al Bukhari, they even include um, a reference to Surah 65, verse 4, which says that you can marry, divorce, marry and divorce after having sex with a prepubescent girl. And they use that to illustrate uh, Muhammad's relationship with Aisha. So it's just weird that right here in this one spot of Sahih al-Bukhari, they translate something as puberty when, as you're saying, there's no, there's no basis for that in the Arabic. Yeah, and, and my, my uh, uh, medical assessment of this is a case called uh, uh, TMRT, the miracle of retranslation. <laughs> the miracle of retranslation, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. So uh, notice, what we, notice what we can say here. There are Muslims all over the world who are really bothered by Muhammad's relationship with Aisha. They're told all their lives that Muhammad is, a, is the greatest man who's ever lived and that he was, he was perfect in every way. And then they find out that Muhammad had sex with a nine-year-old girl. And at first they, they generally deny this. Oh no, he, might, he couldn't have done that. But then we show them the sources and then they eventually start saying, well, uh, right here in Sahih al-Bukhari, it says that, um, that Aisha had reached puberty. And, but even that is based on a mistranslation and it's not found in the Arabic. That's very interesting. Now, I want to point out one more thing about uh, why this is so disturbing. So I'm going to uh, pull up here a passage from an article by the Yakin Institute. This is Asadullah Ali Andalusi and Jonathan Brown. Jonathan Brown is a world-renowned uh, Islamic scholar. And we have here them using this quotation from Sahih al-Bukhari, and they don't try to tr actually translate it as puberty, but they say that it refers to puberty. But look at what they say here. Narrated Aisha, I had seen my parents following Islam since I attained the age of reason. So not the age when I could remember things. It's the age when I'm, uh, I've gained my reasoning ability. And they're saying that refers to the age of puberty. Not a day passed, but the Prophet visited us both in the mornings and 
evenings. So they're saying that the, the in the Arabic it refers to the age of reason, and they're saying that's puberty. That's which is just silly. Even if you wanted to say age of reason, at, at, on what planet do you suddenly begin to reason when you reach puberty? That's um, true. Yeah, there are people who are reason really in really sloppy fashion after they reach puberty, and they're very uh, intelligent people before they reach puberty. I mean, I, I wish they would give us a maybe a medical research that was done and saying, hey, we're relying on this research, and that's why we're assuming the age of reason meant puberty. Mm -hmm. But even when you look at the Arabic, there is no such thing as the age of reason. All she's saying is, for as far as I can remember, mm -hmm. has nothing to do with reason has nothing to do with knowing right from wrong. You know, this is just remembering thing. Age of reason to me is that you know what is right, you know what is wrong now, mm -hmm. and you're accountable for it. Yep. And so, you're, you're, according to what you're saying, it's actually very simple. She's just saying, hey, as long as I can remember, yeah. my parents are following Islam. Very simple, very straightforward. And then you have a mistranslation that then gets used to defend Muhammad. and. It's one thing for Muslims to do this. It's one thing for your average Muslim who doesn't know what the Arabic says, who doesn't know um, uh, how to read this passage and interpret it and understand it, and just reads the English translation and says, oh, there, you see, um, Muhammad, uh, Aisha had reached puberty. It's one thing for, for a Muslim like that. There, they don't know what they're talking about, but I wouldn't think that that person is trying to deceive me. But when I see Muslim scholars and they're using it, and they know that it doesn't, it says nothing about puberty, and they're still maintaining mm -hmm. that this actually refers to Aisha reaching puberty, I can only assume that they are deliberately trying to deceive their Muslim readers in order to keep their Muslim followers from leaving Islam based on how disturbed they are about this issue. That is very true. And, and again, I, I want to I give them the benefit of the doubt, at least the, the, uh, um, uh, the uh, Yaqeen um, uh, Institute. Uh, if they can just show us, may, maybe they have access to a, a medical research that inserts something like this. I mean, I'm, I'm open for the idea. Just let's, let's look at the evidence. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is far-fetched, you know, when you start making claims like this. So what we have is a simple hadith that makes a simple claim from Aisha, uh, gets twisted and uh, mistranslated, and then Muslims who are desperate to defend their prophet run around the world with a mistranslation, and then actual Muslim scholars use the mistranslation in order to mislead their followers into thinking that Muhammad was better than he actually was. Well, uh, thanks, Al Fadi, for uh, helping me out, helping me with my confusion here, and showing people that all you Muslims and non Muslims, even who are using these passages to show that Aisha had reached puberty, you're either ignorant of what the Arabic says or you are deliberately misleading and deceiving people. So think about that. And if you'd like more commentary on Muhammad and the Quran from someone who knows the Arabic and can cut through a lot of the nonsense, be sure to check out Al-Fadi's channel, Sira International.